Well, I decided to stay on at Timmouth for a bit longer because the sun's come out again and it's lovely and warm. So it's still Tuesday, but I'm now going to talk about Thursday's pyjama preaching. This is reading from verse 25. In the crowd was a woman who'd suffered continual bleeding for 12 long years. Despite going from doctor to doctor, using up all her savings in the process, her condition had worsened and she was desperate. She heard about Jesus and now pushed through the crowd until she could touch his cloak. One touch is all it will take, she told herself. She felt her bleeding stop and knew that her years of suffering were over. As so I know as a chap, when you start talking about women things, it can be quite embarrassing, but I have to say my mum, when I was in my teens, told me how she used to have terrible periods when she could have huge volume and it was just awful for her and made her life absolutely miserable and had different treatments which I think eventually helped and I think she was delighted when she reached the menopause. But for this woman, 12 years, 12 years of suffering. Not only that, going to every doctor, to doctor, to doctor, desperate for a cure. And you know, we're talking about doctors in Jesus's time. So what did they know compared to what we know now? Also, the fact if she was bleeding, she was unclean, wasn't she? I seem to remember. So for her to be in a crowd as a woman, walking up to Jesus and grabbing his cloak, and actually grabbing cloaks was something that people did to rabbis. And actually they do it to sort of professors and academics as well, that you grab hold of their robe and hold on to it and you are putting them like a a cashier number two situation that you are in a queue. But she's not hanging on to him. She pushes through the crowd, which is a big thing in the in itself. And then she touched her cloak, his cloak. And then what does she tell herself? One touch is all it will take. And as soon as she did, she felt the bleeding stop. And she knew that the years of suffering were over. She didn't need a doctor. She just knew. Now that's faith. I think in present times, we're very, very wary about people being miraculously healed without also having advice from medics. And I don't think anybody should stop medication or treatment simply because of Christ's miracles. I'm an advocate of prayer and pills working together. And so for us today, we pray and thank God for all of the medics, all of the nurses, all of the people who have been risking their lives during COVID-19 and beyond the paramedics, all the health workers, all the cleaners, everybody who is involved in treating people and making them well again. And we do also thank you that you, Jesus, give us the confidence to step forward as that woman did and to seek healing because there are so many people nowadays who just put up with a bad condition and don't seek help, even in this country where we've got a free health service. So Lord, just encourage people to not be ashamed, not to be embarrassed about their illnesses. We think about mental health and we've thought about the, the man of the garrisons and the stigma that's there and the stigma for a woman bleeding. All those stigmas need to be that we change our attitudes towards these people. And we love them as Jesus does. Because Jesus didn't shout, get away from me, did he? Anyway, enough rambling. Let's just pray. Lord, help us to see people through your eyes to trust in you to trust your guidance and let us really rejoice in the medics and all the care that we get and think about those in other countries where having medical attention is far more difficult amen have a good day god bless